Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to look at um, the gradient tool. This one over here. Um, a lot of people don't use it, but it has a lot of interesting strengths. Um, and the reason why a lot of people don't use it is uh, because um, they just use it in an out-of-the-box kind of way. So for example, um, they'll pick like a, a gradient and um, the default is just linear. And what they go, what they do is it's like, oh yeah, well that's interesting. Well, I'm probably not going to use that uh, ever again. But where where that strength comes from is when you start combining this with l on its own layer uh, and with different levels of opacity and different um, modes that you can select from here. So of course. Uh, in its basic kind of element, you can pick a gradient or choose this, for example, or that, and it's quite boring in its in its fundamental kind of uh, nature. However, it gets a little more exciting when um, when you start applying it on its own layer and then start manipulating that layer. So, right click, new layer and just make sure that that's transparency because that just means a blank new layer. So there's a blank new layer sitting on top of this layer here. Okay, now how do we um, add things here? Now the gradient tool, um, if I just start with this, let, let me just explain a few things here. There's a custom gradient tool that you can, you can build your own. Um, gradient tools quite easily. We're not going to cover that in, in this particular video, but you've got the capacity to create your own gradients. But there's a whole range of pre-selected gradients that you can choose from. It starts off with ones that um, rely on your f foreground and background colors. So you can see it's borrowed from these two colors here. And there are some also that have um, transparency, such as this one. And if I scroll down a little bit more, I'll, I'll see some more transparent or uh, yeah, transparent options down here as well. So let's pick that old boring one again that I had before, but now it's sitting on its own layer so I can reduce its intensity or its, its opacity. And I can also play with the mode, for example, uh, screening, let me just run through them very quickly and you'll see all the different kind of things you can do, interesting things you can do to a picture just using that. So you can make something that is rather boring, um, interesting using the modes. Let's go to um, yep, yeah, let's, let's go to a, a few few different options here. As you can see, when I do that, it's a linear effect. Um, but if Y was to choose, uh, where is it? Down here. That's a linear shape, meaning it goes vertically or horizontally, depending which way I kind of um, stretch that gradient out. But if I choose radial, then that does interesting things too. But it creates a circle, and that's the uh, idea of that. So there's a there's a few here that I really like, but let's let's go with that. Um, you can see you can add some really cool effects to some images. And if I was to say, um, yep, you, you could make a pretty cool profile picture just like that. Um, you can also, if I was to grab uh, the metallic one, that does some interesting things with the divide as well because it adds a really interesting kind of brightness, which you may not want there, but you could probably just add it a little bit there. Um, these ones are also pretty cool too, uh, but they have an implied transparency. So let me make it 100% here and go back to normal. Oops. Let me get rid of that. Um, let me clear that. So I'm just going to press Control A to select all and press delete. So it's a blank layer again. Let's 
go to normal. So these are, oh, it's gone back to divide. So you see what that, what these do. Um, these ones here with the implied transparency. So uh, pretty cool things you can do once you start using it um, with a bit of opacity or um, uh, changing the modes. Just to run through um, a few more of these. Square will do the same thing in square. So for example, um, rather than a radial, you get a square happening. There is a, um, these are pretty cool. Um, you know, that these, you can use these at corners. Let me just uh, change the, something a little bit more, um, more obvious. Okay, like these. So you can see what these, what these do. Um, the length doesn't really matter on this one that much, but, um, and let me just try that again like that. But I find it's, it's useful to use in, in the corners. I really like this golden one, this golden one, um, because gold's not a color in itself as a flat color. You can only achieve the golden effect through, um, through tones. And that's why this one's pretty cool as a gold uh, gradient. I, I do use it from time to time, but let me go to divide. I find it does interesting things on divide. Grain extract as divide. Probably lower the intensity of that. And so that's what conical does. Shaped will follow the shape of the object. And spiral, as the name says, you can do some cool things like that. Okay, so there you have it. I hope uh, that kind of gives you a few pointers. For example, where you could use this, some applications. Um, if I look at the greens here, right? Let's say I applied some green, not, not, not change the mode from divide to let's say overlay. Let's say you were you had a picture of a forest that was quite dull. You could apply this green gradient to it and um, and then it'll just add some extra hues of green to, to, to the forest and it'll bring it to life, believe me. So um, consider these sorts of things um, when you're editing images and uh, if you've got, if you've taken photos of certain things and you want to add a certain color to it in an interesting way. Hope that helps. Um, reach out and comment if you need any further clarifications or any questions. Thank you so much for watching.